all the thanks and acknowledgements that I would have liked to have done, but we're going to get right into it. Um, I want to start, Jane, by talking to you about this film. You produced this film. I'm a producer myself, so I know a little bit about it and know that very often producing is a very behind the scenes, oftentimes misunderstood, not really recognized, and at times thankless job. And in this case, I happen to know, because of my conversations with a number of folks, that your hands touched every frame of this film. And it's an extraordinary thing that you did in terms of, you know, shepherding this film to the great success that it's arrived to. And just give us a little bit of, you know, the inside view into your process, what it was like, the things that were really, you know, transformational in terms of how a producer can impact a story. True. So we made this film during the pandemic. So while we were, uh, and then we were in Canada, so we couldn't go anywhere. So um, actually, we had, uh, I worked with Dan Trachtenberg, and he's the one that hired me to work with him. And just being able to start from like the script, changing a few things, changing some names, changing some words, infusing uh, my Comanche, because I'm Comanche and Blackfeet. So infusing my language in, that was a, a big thing. Um, but it was it was a long when when she was talking about 365 days I calculated real quick I've been on this project 660 days um, 23 hours and 10 minutes and so many seconds so um, <laughs> I, I thought let me see how long I've been working on this so it was pretty amazing because uh, I got to function as a, a creative you know, more so than just, I've done everything, as Heather probably knows, and she's done too, you know, line producing, you know, all, all different types of producing. So being able to really, like, uh, be high-functioning with creativity, that's what appealed to me. I'm a fine artist. Uh, I have showed at this show in Santa Fe for 15 years, and I've showed at uh, many fine art shows around the country, like the Herd Museum. I've won Best of Show there. So I got to use all of my talents just in everything and work with... Um, you know, the hair people, the makeup people, let's get everything right, let's go to this time period. Because every time I see a project, and it's uh, when it's like in the 1700s, I'm kind of like, oh no, you know, because we just want like something to be right, you know, a little something. And so the fact that, uh, you know, we got to do this and it was the Predator, it was really exciting for me. So I was like, oh, we're going to do this different because we're in Canada. We didn't have any studio visits. As you know, we always have to have people come up and executives. The border was closed, so guess what? It was like, yes! <laughs> so, that, that was, you know, that, that was their fault, not mine. They should have chartered the plane, right? So, uh, so they, even one tried really hard, Robbie tried to come up, and he, uh, he, he made the mistake of going through Vancouver, and they turned him around and sent him back to L.A. So I think that's what helped it, you know, in, in, my, in my opinion, in my humble opinion. So for me to really, and we're really overwhelmed with the success because we knew that we were making good work. Anytime that Native people can hire other Native people and you're in a position, like when you're in a position as a producer, that's when you address it. When we're not producers, when we're something else, that's why things don't get addressed. But if you're at the table, and I'm a pushy auntie, I guess, you know, you can just say, hey, wait a minute, that's not right. And Amber knows, because she, she was up there, I think you came two weeks it. after me. Okay. Yeah, she, stood, she stayed out of the way. And it, it was good. It was really good. <laughs> The press on this film is incredible. 98% on Rotten Tomato. Like, that just doesn't happen. 98% on Rotten Tomatoes. And uh, it's, you know, from audiences. And it's also unusual for producers to really be in the press. It's not as common. And tell us about what you have been up to. Because you've done a little press, Jane. I've done quite a bit of press. Uh, it was funny because somebody from uh, a national museum of American Indians once told me nobody cares about producers. And I'm like, that's not true. You know, I mean, I, I just pour, try to pour myself into all my work. And I've been everywhere. I mean, Amber and I, we were on like a 20 day, we opened at Comic-Con and we had 16 hours off before we flew to London for the international uh, premiere. We did the worldwide at Comic-Con. Then she, and how many people saw her on Good Morning America? A native woman hero. She had to fly through to uh, New York, and then we came back through Oklahoma, then back out to LA. So it's been it's been a big haul 
and I've been right there, so it's it's been great. It's amazing. Amber, Miss Amber, you're a local girl, right? And uh, we're gonna back up a little bit. Tell us the audition story. Like, what was the story around how it all happened? Auditioning, people oftentimes don't realize how difficult auditioning for a film can be, particularly when you get to the point where you get the part. Yeah. Like, there's a lot of process in that. So tell us a little bit about the whole audition process. Well, I auditioned for Prey when it was under another name, and I had no idea that it was a Predator movie at all. I only knew it as a film that was about a young Comanche woman who wanted to be a hunter and that some big studio was doing it, and that I thought was very unusual and exciting. You know, I had no idea why they were, they were doing that, because we don't ever get that kind of attention. Um, so that was exciting to me, and I auditioned, and you know, I like Skyped with the director, and, and the, the pandemic happened and it went away completely, and it came back, and we did a uh, like screen test audition. So we went like out into the woods in LA and it kind of felt like shooting, but it wasn't. And they gave us scenes in English and they gave us scenes in Comanche to memorize. Cause at that time they didn't know if they were gonna shoot the movie entirely in Comanche or entirely in English. So we were like guinea pigs. Um, so we went out and did that. And then I was like, just filled with like fear and anxiety, honestly, I was like so scared. Um, and when I found out that it was a Predator movie, my manager called me and he told me, and I was like not even wildly familiar with Predator movies, but I immediately burst into tears. <laughs> just like out of, cause it was so, it, it kind of like, it was just so many feelings all at once. And I was like excited, but I was also really nervous. Cause like, you know, our director is white and like, Jane at that point was involved, but she wasn't on board yet when I had originally auditioned and like I didn't get to read the full script until my test audition, which is normal, you know, because it's a big studio and they protect their scripts like that. So it was like, to me, I felt a lot of responsibility to the indigenous community to like try to represent well and do my best to do a good job. And, you know, it's scary because having Jane there was nice, but in my position, you know, you become like the face of something, but you're not responsible for all the choices. But sometimes people put that on you. So if it wasn't a good movie, or if the native representation wasn't good, that could have come on me in a way, you know, and, and obviously Jane. You blame the producer. They're always like, it was the producer. Well, you know. Um, so it was just like, to me, I felt that pressure of wanting to have all those things be the most accurate and respectful and and we were very lucky because Dan was extremely open to that stuff like he was very correctable and he was very respectful and he wanted to hear what we had to say and he incorporated both of our opinions far beyond what I've ever seen normal um, and I think that allowed it to be what it has become and I'm really proud and really excited and I did not expect anybody to see it at all <laughs> you you're not a newbie right you you've been working for a while you have a career behind you that led you to this point which even of itself in and of itself is unprecedented in terms of what particularly you know a native actress has done so it's extraordinary and in your journey leading up to this point i'm sure there have been times when you did not necessarily you didn't have jane and you shouldered the responsibility of you know narrative change or narrative responsibility and i'm curious if it was a different experience than this you know making this film because you did have a partner in jane you know in terms of getting things right and i wonder if you noticed something distinct about that yeah absolutely i mean for so many reasons this project was a very different experience for me in getting to shoot because i've not done a lot of native specific roles before on purpose because it's so rare that there are good ones it's so rare that there are quality ones and i feel like you know my dad is an actor and he grew up in that time when it's like he's really only ever played period piece indian because that's all that there really was available and we have a lot of conversations about that and you know i feel like i love acting because it's just what i love like the way that you know a singer loves to sing like i just love to act so that to me is like a selfish kind of joy but what I care about as far as like a career is that I want to accomplish as much as I possibly can for Native people, whatever that means and however that's possible. So I think that something that's really valuable is when there's Native specific content that it's done in a way that we can be proud of and that we are involved in and that we feel that reflects us the way that we want to be seen and that hasn't ever been seen. And when there's not Native specific roles, 
whether that's in front of or behind the camera, I think it's important to have indigenous people there because we are more than, you know, it, so often when there's a native character, it's centered around being native, which like all of us, like of course that's an important part of who we are and our culture and our upbringing, but like we are also so many things, you know, we are filmmakers and artists and skateboarders and whatever we are. And we can be that too, you know, like we can, I can just play a doctor or a superhero or whatever. And like, I think that's a really important part of proving to other people as well, that we have so much value in any given space. Cause when you look at like filmmaking, we have been storytellers since the very beginning. Like this is, that is our medium that everybody else is working in. Like it belongs to us. So I think it's important to like feel as a people that liberty and like take that. Yeah. Jane, did you feel that? Yes, absolutely. Beautifully said. Did you feel that, Jane, that you knew that, that, that you, you had a partnership with the actors? And some of those actors were early to, you know, to, to working as actors, correct? Like they... Yes. Uh, we had Dakota Beavers, who plays Amber's brother, and this is his first role ever. Yeah. He always would tell you he worked at TJ Maxx, and I believe him. <laughs> so... Um, <laughs> But it was great, you know, a lot of a lot of the boys were first time actors, but then we also had some Canadian actors as well that are known in Canada, but not like worldwide like it is now. So, um, but also my real important uh, part being in my position is I wanted native people to not just be in front of the camera, but behind the camera. So uh, we had a internship program where we got native people uh, that lived in Canada to work in every department. And the cool thing about that was that they were able to um, get in the union because they did their hours and everything on our production and then they got into the union. So I get text messages or DMs from people and said, guess what, I just got picked up on my third show and I'm still going. And I think until we have all of, you know, until we have a full crew that's 100% native, you know, probably as dogs, but, but you know, until that happens, you know, we need to have native people in every aspect. And so that was really important. And even in the post-production, uh, you watch the movie at the very end, you see the credits. So that end credit roll, we had a supervisor over that, Kaz Kip, who is native. Yay, shout out to Kaz. And then we picked seven fine artists. I went to the Herd Museum and found people that were the top ledger artists and top painters, and they created that. Had any of them ever worked with Disney's animation because Disney has the best animation in the world, right? So this opened a door. The, the people that were doing the end credits, they didn't know about hide art. They didn't know about ledger art. They didn't know about rock art. So, you know, it was really uh, kind of a, a teaching tool for both people. You know, our people got, our artists got to work, you know, with the animators and go back and correct this, change this. And then also, you know, they, they were open to this new thing. This is so cool because everybody wants something cool at the end, right? You want to have like those end credits. That's never been done. But it, for us being native and having this background, it's easy. I'm like, okay, we can do that. How much is it going to, how much How much money do we have in the budget for it? We can get it done. And we did, and people are raving about the end credits. And it's yeah. like, ah, mini movie within a movie. You also brought on a native writer, Mary Catherine Nagel, who helped to just, you know, push the narrative in the right direction. And, you know, she's one of the people who told me, Jane's hands are in every frame of that film, you know, so I think that was beautiful also to give someone an opportunity to come in as a writer at a studio level because it is a, there is one thing to make, you know, independent films and it's a whole other thing to make films in the studio system. It's part of what is so revolutionary about what the two of you have done. It's really, really incredible. Thank yeah. you. Yeah, so I don't know how we are for time, people. Yeah, the studio, it's its really different because 20th was bought by Disney. So then you have 20th, you have 20th, you have Hulu, and then you also have Disney. And yet uh, 20th Century still runs like a, boutique, uh, like a boutique studio. So my outlook on that was I would just do it. Like, okay, if we want to do this, oh, like bring in your data. So I brought her dad up, right, when the border was closed. We're Indians. You have no borders. We can come up. We can go everywhere, right? So, so I, uh, it was a surprise for Amber, and her dad came up. So I put him uh, on the, like, not on the payroll, but on, a, um, on our crew list as a special skilled... As a uh, VFX producer, supervisor, something. For some native special, special effects. Yeah. And he, came, he got in, and he came in, and uh, so then the... I didn't say anything, and uh, they were like, we have to get him on the testing schedule. They tested him, he was on the set with us, you know, I put a chair, yeah. and then uh, our director tried to get uh, 
somebody or his wife in the studio goes, no, you can't do that. And he's like, Jane, how did you do that? You brought Amber's dad up. And I'm like, because we're Indians. We just do it. I just do it. Like, if I'm getting in trouble, you know, it's going to be worth it, right? So I'll get, in I'll get in trouble later. But they didn't even know. I said, shh. We're sneaky. Yeah. And, and dad was there. Yeah. Yeah, for how He was there for like two weeks, yeah. And he was in Amster back in the day. So like he always gets caught at the Canadian border. And he was like all worried that he was gonna have to like memorize a bunch of stuff like what is a VFX native producer supervisor. <laughs> like, he was like, I don't know what that job is. So he was like trying to study it. And so they like brought him in for extra like screening or whatever, and it was all aim questions, and he was like, They didn't ask me once about that job, and I know so much about it now. <laughs> Yeah, so that yeah, that's just the way that we do it, right? So, and it was great for Amber and a nice surprise to have him, and he was he was really fun. Yeah, he's also a he's, he in his history was a stuntman as well, right? I think he he did stunts, yeah. Um, then a lot of stuff on horseback and all that. Did yeah. he did he support you and help you? Like, what was the process? You did how much of your own stunts did you do? I mean, I did everything. They I also had a stunt double who also did everything. So when I watch the movie, I'm like, is that me? I can't tell. <laughs> tell them about the tomahawk you did your Oh yeah, there was a there was like a you know, we had like a four week boot camp. So it was me and all the other hunter boys, like Dakota and all all the boys from Canada, and we just did like every single weapon that you see in the movie, like the lance, the tomahawk, the the archery, like everything we had there. We would just like go in in the morning and we would spend like all day until like five PM there. And it was just kind of like us figuring out like what is the coolest thing you can do with a tomahawk? What is the coolest thing you can do with a bow and arrow? Um, and we had a scene, so like Dan would often come to us and be like, it "Needs something." He would always say, it "Needs yeah, something." Needs what does something. it mean? Like, what is the coolest thing you can do with it? And we were like, "Lucky, I practiced this." Um, so there was like one day that I was like trying to, I'm like my hands are tied, and he wanted me to like flip it around and catch it, and I was like, "Bro, my hands are tied." Um, <laughs> And we ended up like doing, we like tried for like, I like did it once perfect in front of him and then we went to shoot it. And I swear I did it like 20 times and just every time it would like fall out of my hands. And I was like, I swear I'm cool. I swear I could do this. And then like on the, he was like about to give up. And I was like, Dan, I got this. And on the last take we finally got it. And that's what's in the movie. And it looks great. And everybody's like, cool, how did you do that? Because everybody can do that, right? They're like, you can do that. I'm like, yeah, if I try like 22 times. <laughs> what is next for you, Amber? Um, I just had a movie come out that I produced called The Wheel. Um, it premiered at TIFF last year, which was really cool. I produced that during the pandemic. And then I've just been like, you know, really enjoying this moment and like reading scripts and taking meetings and stuff like that and figuring out like what, you know, I'm gonna, what I'm gonna do next with my career. But I'm definitely looking at like bleeding into what you ladies do. <laughs> Well, it's nice to be able to design your own path, you know, and I think that actors, it's good to be producers, you know, because you can do that. Jane, what is next for you? What are you up to? I have a few things. Um, so I have Mistress Red that I produced before I left, and that's out, and there's Pichon right there. She wrote it, wrote it, directed, she's amazing, and also my daughter. But, um, <laughs> I produced that, actually. You don't want to go there. <laughs> so, uh, <laughs> but no, I have, um, when I got back, I produced another, um, I produced another short called Rude Girl that's making its way around now. That's with Joshua Mazzini. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, came, I came back and I was back three days and I had something else, uh, a pilot that I needed to shoot for Amazon. Mm -hmm. So I, 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 was, I was home three days and I went out and shot a pilot for a, a really interesting, cool docu-series. And then a documentary I finished before I left just got Emmy nominated last week. Wow. So that's with Silver Bullet. Have her wide the sky, places of power. So I have I have that and hopefully we win. So that'd be nice. We've won before, so it'd be, it'd be cool. And uh, let's see. Oh, and Taboo called me. He, DM, he slid into my DMs. And he's like, girl, we need to make some magic. <laughs> What? Oh. <laughs> he goes, what oh, does I that mean? <laughs> no, I was like, uh, don't get specific here. So, um, but no. So, but actually, he has uh, an animation project that he wants me to look at. So, I said I would. Well, we just can't um, say enough to acknowledge the two of you and you have created such a path of inspiration and possibility for so many of us. It's, it's just, it's unprecedented. 
it's historic, it's revolutionary, it's all those things, and you should absolutely enjoy this moment. Like, take every second of it in and enjoy it, and just know that we are all here, you know, hands up, just so excited and, and so grateful to you for how hard you worked to create what you created, so thank you. Thank you, thank you. It's our pleasure. When I read the script, I wanted to make this script for Indian people. You know, it wasn't finely fine-tuned enough, and I wanted it to. I said, if Indian people like this and nobody else likes it, I'm okay. But you know, the fact that like Indian people like it and I love it and it's great and Comanches loved it and I can still go back there and everything. So. <laughs> I love it. So it, it's been great. Yes. And Amber is going to be our, our uh, celebrity guest. Celebrity. I'm an honorary Comanche now. <laughs> For the Comanche Nation Fair, so that means they really like it. Thank you. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> oh, that's right. You two are back uh, tomorrow for the film panel at what time? Uh, let me double check. So we get more of you, which is good. It is at 12.30 tomorrow. 12.30 tomorrow, okay. Yeah. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thanks, everyone. Thank you.